I have the redesigned Ford Ranger and Chevy Colorado here for 2024 and we're gonna do an MPG and acceleration run today. Both of these trucks are available for the Chevy, Jerry Signer here in Salt Lake City and Larry H. Miller for the Ford. This is the Salt Lake City location. Be sure to check out their inventory. Let's go ahead and drive the Ranger first and then we'll drive the Chevy right after. One thing I've mentioned in the past about Ford is they do have really comfortable seats, but the support on these seats is what really wins. I do like the amount of support. I'm not a big guy, but I'm not small either, I guess. Now let's go ahead and talk about the EcoBoost under the hood. And then I'll show you guys that zero to 60 here. So here is that 2.3 liter EcoBoost inline four turbocharged engine, 270 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque, made it to a 10 speed transmission and a 373 rear. Let's see how it accelerates to 60. Here we go. That wasn't bad. I was expecting to be a little bit worse than that, but 8.73 to 60 is pretty dang good. Now we are above elevation, like by about 5,000 feet or so here in Salt Lake. And I have noticed even on turbocharged engines, it does affect them. Supercharged engines, it affects it. So I would say 8.73, not too shabby for this truck. Now, as far as the performance goes, like this thing handles, it handles like a car. And it does have independent front suspension. The tires are the, where are they? Goodyear Wrangler Territory 18s, I believe. I'll show you guys a quick look at them. Nice tire, and I will say that they are pretty quiet. So I'll show you guys some of the sound of the interior. But before we do that, let me show you guys the RPMs. Okay, I told a small fib. I don't see the RPMs for the smaller screen. Now, if you get the 12 inch display, this is the eight inch, it does show the RPMs, but I don't see where you can configure the RPMs in here. So they probably don't give that to you, which kind of stinks actually. But the lane keep assist works pretty well. And if you didn't know, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it does have a 373 rear end. So the RPM is going to run a little bit higher compared to like the Chevy Colorado. And I'll explain that to you guys why in a second. But we should be to the midpoint here soon. Let's go ahead and discuss the payload on this truck. Here are the numbers on the door. Gross fuel coil engine is going to be 6,170 pounds. All in payload is 1,604 pounds. Here is the midpoint. Exit 11, we've basically driven about seven miles, give or take. And now we have to coast down to zero. But here's where we are so far. We actually hit 20.8 MPG. So on the sticker it says 24 on the highway and 20 in the city with a 22 combined. So this is kind of like mixed driving because I have to stop here. I have to stop two more times and then I'll be back at the dealership okay so we're still coasting so we're still going up so you guys can see right there 21.3 mpg 7.1 miles driven and we average about 61 miles an hour Seven on the window. Sixty-three, sixty-four out back. And I would say that this interior at seventy miles an hour is pretty quiet. You hear a little bit of wind noise. Like right now, I'm passing by a big eighteen-wheeler, so you can hear that. There's a little bit of wind noise, but the tires are quiet. They're nice and soft. And this truck having the lane keep assist, it does really keep the truck planted to like in the center like once it bounces back over let's see yeah it almost keeps it centered in the lane actually 
this is actually lane centering. I don't know why I'm saying it isn't, but it is. But you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. This is an XLT trim level, by the way, too. Comes pretty decked out. Now, this one does have a few options on it. I did a video on this one comparing it to a Lariat, so you might want to check out that video. But we should be back in a little bit, and I'll show you guys where we end off at. The auto stop start on this truck works really good. I've stopped like three or four times, like I said, and it's come on every single time. Now the gauges are not that great in this truck. They don't give you a number and they don't give you a lot to look at. So they just give you like the turbo boost, which is nice. And then they give you like a transmission coolant, but that's pretty much it. And here's where we are at the stop. 23.1. MPG, 15.1 miles driven. We averaged 48 miles, so it did drop because like I said, we had to drive back through the city. That is pretty dang good. Let's drive the Chevy. The very first thing I noticed when I jumped in the Chevy is you don't have the same support on the sides of the seats as the Ford does. And these seats are a little bit stiffer, but they're still comfortable for me. But for some people, they might be a little too stiff, but the Ford seats are definitely softer, for sure. But let's go ahead and talk about the Turbo Max because this is where the Chevy shines. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna beat the Ford because it has more power, bigger displacement. The numbers line up. The 2.7 liter Turbo Max in the Chevy is definitely class leading here. It's gonna have 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. All that power goes through an eight-speed transmission and a 342 rear end. All right, so my stupid draggy is not working, so we have to do this manually. Hopefully it will record the times for us, all right? Hold on. Yeah, that was definitely faster compared to the uh, Ford, but unfortunately it did not record at all so sadly yeah that sucks that sucks i've been meaning to get another device for the zero to 60 because i've had issues in the past with the draggy it's saying that the satellites aren't working or whatever it's not giving me a signal but it's a pretty sunny day and i've done it on cloudy days before to short great but it's not a big deal. If I have a chance, maybe I'll show you guys another zero to 60. I've done them in the past with these trucks and I might just use that footage just to give you an idea and a basis point. But yeah, this truck was definitely faster. It had more guts at the low end compared to the Ford. So I'm not shocked that it's a lot quicker. So yeah, nevertheless, hopefully I'll show you guys something, but it's still not working. It's still showing that the satellites aren't working. And normally what it'll do is it'll at least show you an idea of the zero to 60. So, and it didn't even record anything. So that's what really sucks, but I'm done talking about it. Let's go ahead and check out the RPMs. So at about 70 miles an hour, we're probably about 16 to 1700 RPMs, give or take. You can hear the engine a little bit more for the Chevy Colorado compared to the Ford. And that's pretty shocking because you do have higher gearing out back with the 342. But I'm willing to bet you that the RPMs are still lower than the Ford. But it could just be this engine is a little bit more louder. I do notice the turbo noises a little bit better in this one too. And the turbo max across the board, when I drive these in the Silverado, they all tend to have better turbo sounds. And I do like to hear that whistle from the turbo for sure. But this one definitely does feel a little bit tighter. It handles a little bit better. Now, does it have lane keep assist? It surely does. It has lane keep assist. Now, it probably doesn't have lane centering. So let's go and put it in cruise control. It has adaptive cruise control but it's not gonna have lane centering. But it does have lane keep assist, which is still nice to have. Keeps you in that lane perfectly. We should be at the midpoint probably in the next three to five minutes. So let's go ahead and check out the weight of the truck with the payload. Here are the numbers on the door for the Chevy. 
gross fuel coil rating is going to be 6,250 pounds. All in payload is 1,389 pounds. We just pulled off on exit 11, so this is the midpoint. Same place, same drive as the Ford Ranger. And I think we're a little bit further behind, by the way, too, by a good bit. Now the numbers on this truck are 23 and 18. Now this truck does have the 20 inch wheels, things like that. Oh, we didn't catch this light by the way. So 19.6, 7.1 miles driven. So that's about the exact same as the Ford. But we're at 19.6 versus I think like what was it, like 21 or 22, somewhere in there. But we're gonna go back the opposite direction. We gotta get back up the speed. And then I'll show you guys how loud the interior is compared to the Ford. Sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-seven, sixty-eight on the window. And 65 out back. So it's a little bit louder. And as I say, you can hear the engine a little bit more so. There's not as much wind noise though. I can clearly tell the difference there compared to the Ford. And this has a sunroof too, but if I close it all the way, yeah, this has Bridgestone Dueler tires, but it is running on 20 inch wheels. So that could be a factor, but this truck feels bigger. It feels bigger, it feels more planted too. And I think I like the way this one rides a little bit better. Just a little bit. It's, it just feels like a bigger truck for some reason. Cab feels about the same. When you look back, you can tell it's a small cab. But up here, like I had to move my seat up a little bit compared to the Ford. Now, if I put it all the way down and all the way back, yeah, it goes back really far. So as a tall person, you might like the Chevy a little bit better for sure. We're at 19.8. And we're not quite back yet. I'm going to be doing 70, 75 miles an hour on the way back. And I'll show you guys where it is. By the way, my draggy's working. So I might put at the end of this video some footage of that. But don't hold me to it because I have it on right now. But let's see if it, let's see if it works later. I do love GM's gauges the best. They show you the coolant temperature with a number and the battery voltage. Also... You have your transmission fluid, 199 degrees. Then it shows you the oil temperature, 223 degrees. Love that they give this stuff to you. Now, I believe I went right through this light with the Ford, but I will say back there, I went through basically both lights without having to stop all the way. So we are a little bit ahead. They don't show you the time. We're at 22.6. Let's see where we end off at. Pulling back in right here. 15.1 miles driven, 21.9 MPG. The Ford definitely won that one for sure. So when it's all said and done, the Chevy definitely was quickest and the Ford got better fuel economy. Now this was kind of a disadvantage because the 2.7 liter inline four has more horsepower and torque. And this truck does have more options on it, like the 20 inch wheels. So those things could have affected fuel economy slightly, but let's face it, that 2.3 is gonna be more fuel efficient. It has less power, but at the end of the day, it's a smaller displacement engine. Now, once they come out with a twin turbo V6 for the Ranger, I will do this test over. And maybe what I'll do is I'll find a lesser 2.7 liter from Chevy, cause they have three different levels for this engine, but there's a mid range engine. I can't remember what they call it. That one might be better suited against this truck and it might get better fuel economy, but I hope you guys liked the video. I felt like the Chevy was the better ride here. It felt bigger on the road and it felt more planted compared to the Ford, but the Ford seats with the support that they have definitely took the cake for me. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the zero to 60 with my dumb drag if it works. So if you see that footage, and maybe if you see my spreadsheet here, you'll see the numbers, but I'll show it to you guys here. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. We'll be doing more videos on these midsize pickups. Stay tuned.